Hello world and welcome to my channel. This is going to be a very quick video on an update to my canopy. As I say, it's always going to be a work in progress. Um, I'm just going to keep working on it until I'm happy with it. And I'm happy with it. But um, I've carpeted this. That's all been carpeted. I had to push the battery back a little bit, so I made up a, a plywood block. Uh, and carpeted that and then screwed the block down and then and then the drawers still strapped down to the top of that so that, that battery box is strapped down to the top of the drawer uh, put this um, little uh, clamp holder here this um, saddle I had it in my other ute before I'm using all the parts up I had I had the strap already comes down to here and up and across Yeah. Still access all my switches and everything. Okay, um, I'm just going to do a little experiment on 240 volts. So I'm going to run it on 240 volts to determine the uh, power draw. So I'm going to put a cup of water in there put it on full power and see what it draws um, on a tong tester or an amp meter that's what I'm doing now test it out and see if it if it's going to peak well above uh, what it's rated at right microwave okay. on I'm trying to work out of my shed here at the moment. Open carport and I don't have a lot of room. So, put that in there. So, I shall set the power, it just doesn't matter what it is as long as I want to see start up. So, I'm going to just set this here on a tripod. Angle this down. To here, see if I can pick it up. Currently, I don't do this at home. I'm a trained electrician, so we need to um, put that in there. As I've said, don't do this at home. I'm a trained electrician. Now I'm starting with the, the voltage. The voltage coming out of the plug is 235.5 volts. So you can see that there. That's the voltage I've got. I'm just going to write that down. 235.5 volt. Okay, so I'll take this meter out of here. Turn that off. And then I'll plug this back in. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. So what I'm going to do is put it on to... Amps shouldn't need any more than 20 amps. So I'll just try and pick it up. You can see that there on the screen, I hope. And I'm going to start this jug up this water hub. Okay, I'm just going to start it up. It's 
stop it again. So I'll put it up closer so you can see it. Hopefully you can see it. So I'll start it. So it uses nearly 16 amps on startup. Go again. Over, well over 15 amps on start. So it is using 15.28 15.28 amps on start. So you have a battery that's 13 volts. Yeah, you can see the specifications here on the back back of it. It's a, it's 1150 watt input. But its output is about 800 watts so that's what you're going to go on now if you work that out on 12 volts it's going to draw 86.65 amps when it's running but the problem here is push it back down there is on startup it actually draws three times the current on start so that means this could be drawing having a peak of 240 amps on start. Now A, probably not good for a, a battery up here that's designed for 120 amp uh, draw maximum. <clears throat> and it's probably not good for the... Um, for the uh, the 1500 watt inverter, so I'm deciding not to keep it in here. I'm deciding to take it out, but I'll I'll just keep going with this experiment to show you. So yeah, when you work out your current on the on that specifications, it comes up at 86.46661654. So you can say close enough to 86.47, I suppose. That's what it does, that's what I'll be drawing when it's running. But at start up it draws three times that. So, on 240 volts, according to my plans, it should be drawing 4.89 amps. Working on formulas, when it's running but it's actually drawing 15.28 on start so I don't think it's suitable for a microwave to go in here and I think I might be removing it and uh, trying something else this is an experiment on a air fryer 1700 watt air fryer on I think it's 700 watts, I'll have a look. But you can see when I started up at 1800 watts, um, 180 degrees, 180 degrees. There's no peak on an air fryer because all they have is a fan and an element. Not like a microwave that has a capacitor start motor. Um, so there's no spike. 
So if I can get a, a lower wattage effer, it would work fine. So I need one that's under 1500 watts. Well, my conclusion to this is it might work, but, and here's a big but here, uh, unless you've got a, a really good quality um, battery management system, it could damage it. So what I'm saying is the King's battery um, and most batteries have a constant discharge rate and a pulse discharge rate and um, the pulse discharge rate on the King's one is 160 amps for five seconds this could draw up to 240 amps for one second or one and a half seconds or whatever it is it probably will handle it but one day you'll be out on the tracks and it might fail the BMS inside the battery might fail so you might have no battery you can't run your fridge can't run the lights it's going to piss you off so i'm not going to risk it in my system don't need the microwave i'm probably not going to go with a um travel buddy or one of those 12 volt ovens because for what i do i don't think they're worth it i go camping an hour from here one way, an hour for another way. If I drive the car, I don't like driving more than three hours. Sure, they may heat up from frozen in that time, but I've heard stories where they don't. So, pies and things, so. Yeah, um, I'll have to try and find other ways of doing it, but um, I'm not gonna risk it in my setup. Um, yeah, but as I said, it might work, but one day it may not work and it might damage your battery management system. It has an overload protection in there and all that, but hey, it's a surge power and it's electronics. So surge and power and electronics don't mix real well. Um, so I believe it's not worth the risk. Okay, well, I hope you like this video. If you do, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Cheers.